Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Airsoft Al, and today we are talking about a holster. Not just any holster, but, if research is to be correct, a holster that actually paved the way for modern holsters. The holster in question today is not only military surplus status, but also commercial status as well. We'll get into that in a bit. It is, of course, the M12 holster, and... Believe it when I say this is actually a pretty nice holster. I've, I've got no quarrels with this holster. It is actually rather nice, and uh, like I said, we'll get into that. Now, what is the M12 holster? The M12 holster served the United States military well up until, well, the uh, early 2000s, I believe. Uh, this one is actually rather nice, to be honest. It, it, it really is. Uh, it is military surplus, and this is technically military surplus status, but is also made commercially. And the holsters were, a lot of them were made, as well as not only a right-handed holster, like what we have right here, but also in left-handed as well. Yes, there were, in fact, left-handed holsters, and I saw one at a local flea market for about $10. If I had $10 on me, I would have grabbed it, and I would have had two M12 holsters on either hip. But what's actually nice about the M12 holster is that this is a universal holster. To a degree, mind you. This was designed originally for the M9 pistol, but it does accept a lot of other pistols. Now, before we even get into that, let me just go ahead and say right off the bat, if you were to find this, uh, well, not really find this, uh, before we even get into the pricing, the way this thing's built, all that, uh, I do have something I need to talk about because this thing has an infamous thing in the community being called the Suicide Holster. I didn't understand why it was called the Suicide Holster, then I started actually reading up on it, and the information is static at best. Well, not really static, uh, chaotic at best, because there is so many conflicting information, so many conflicting anecdotes. Uh, one of them, the consistent one that I've seen is because of this right here, the way this is designed to retain the pistol in the holster. Uh, supposedly, you couldn't exactly get the thing out fast enough to get your pistol out when you're drawing. Now, another one is that people would actually unhook it like this, have it unhooked like this, and that way they can do like that. But apparently that would cause the pistol to drop and go off or some other thing as a whole. Uh, again, just one of those things. Uh, you are more than welcome to sound off in the comments section about this, because believe me, the holster as a whole is just... It's got an interesting motif about it, as to why it's called the Suicide Holster. Now, what do you get with the M12 holster? Well, not only do you get this very nice flap, not only is it made of very nice nylon, and I mean very good nylon, you have a retention hook right here, which is held in by elastic. You have this beautiful embroidered U.S. on it, as well as the area where this comes in. This is made of the same type of polymer material as you would see in the uh, Al in some of the Alice gear. Uh, it has a unjamming rod right here, which is held into place by this nice little snap. You can snap it off, and the rubber unjamming rod. And yes, I say rubber because it is a type of rubber. Comes out, and you can use it to unjam the jammed cartridge in the pistol of choice, and I have found that this will fit into a lot of pistols, be it from the M9 uh, to the 1911. Basically, if you have a cartridge that is stuck in the chamber, or a correction, well, yes, in the chamber of the barrel, uh, this will get it out. It is a little bit difficult to actually snap it in there. Now, aside from that, moving over to the left side of it, let me just close this up so I'm not flapping a flap around. You have, which is something we actually have abundant today, but this was kind of a novelty thing, I think, back when it was created, is the actual quick-release clip that allows you to actually open this up, slide it into your belt, pull it down, and actually lock it into place. Uh, now, you can actually loop your belt around it, but behind that is actually a belt loop uh, system right in there, it's, it's a little difficult to actually get, but it is in there for you to actually loop your belt in through this slot right here. Another nice little bit interesting bit is that this little hook right here actually can go around your legs, so the holster is actually a little bit more secured on your person. Now, I did say that this does technically have a surplus status, technically, because 
to my understanding, the company that made this are still making these for the commercial market because a lot of people have actually liked these. And I can understand why. It's a durable holster. It gives your pistol ample protection from the elements and from it being damaged. It just looks good. Like, it really does. It looks really, really good. Now, when I posted about this on Facebook, a lot of people kind of spoke up, and a lot of people were asking, hey, where can I get one? Hey, how cool is that? Some people were saying that they don't like this style because it will cause the magazine, it, it, the, it will cause the magazine uh, release to be activated and cause the magazine to fall out of the pistol. I've not had that issue at all, but um, I think the biggest one is that people say that the draw is... And this is also another one, it's another anecdotal about the M12 holster as a whole, is that the draw is not good. You're not able to get a quick draw out of it. I think that comes down to the person because, let me just go ahead and actually attach this to my hip via my belt here. There we go. Actually attaching it is not difficult, like at all. There we go. Now. And it does look good on you. And this did come in a variety of colors. It came in black. It came in green, you know, de green like this. And I even saw some pictures of it in Woodland. I did not save them in time, and I don't remember where I actually found them. But in terms of actually being able to quick draw the pistol, which let me just go ahead and drop the hammer on this. There we go. Uh, apparently, some people would actually have the hammers open on this bad boy. Um. Or at least they would have their guns ready to go, but uh, it's one of those things. Now, one of the big issues is that apparently the magazine release would be activated, so I'm just going to squeeze out of here. I'm just going to squeeze on this. And, okay, you yeah, know, the magazine did get activated, but the magazine isn't falling out. But I had to extremely squeeze on this for the magazine release to be activated, so maybe that's a minor thing. Now, in terms of a draw, you have to pull on this hook right here in order to actually act in order to open the flap. Uh, now, for me, I've had no problem actually pulling this out because I've got small fingers. Um, I'm, I'm a scrawny person. I'm a very scrawny person. I've got small... I'm, I'm a small build person, so it's, it's not hard for me to get my fingers in things. Now, I can understand why some people with probably bigger hands would have an issue activating this and actually getting the flap open. And a quick scenario where you have to, say, you know, have to pull your pistol out because someone's right there, well, it's not, uh, it's not too difficult to actually do that. So... Damn it, messed up. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's been a while since I've actually unholstered uh, with this gun because I haven't been out and played for a while, but anyway, though. So, let's just try that again, shall we? Well, it's not too difficult. And if you have the flap pre undone, like I saw a lot of people, you can actually, well, do this. And I can understand why now they would have issues with this, because if you watch, even if I do it like this, the pistol itself does get somewhat hung on the flap itself. So I can understand that. But what I like about this, if I can get the safety to engage on this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was a stiff safety. Now, when I said this was a universal holster, I meant it. I have put a lot of pistols in this holster, and they've held in there pretty good. One of my favorite pistols I love running in this is, well, German Luger. And yes, the M12 will actually holster Luger. It's serious on that. Like... No issues whatsoever. The pistol does not come flying out. It's it's secured in place on this. It will fit a Luger. That's why that's why I want that's why I like this. It, it fits a Luger. And it's not that bad to actually unsheath. As for the other guns, well, let me go ahead and grab some other pistols that I have actually had in the M12. First, going to the Ruger P345. This is a more bulky handgun compared to let's say a 1911 or even a Glock. And, of course, it does have a bit of an issue going into the holster, being how thick it is, but it will fit in the holster, which I'm very happy with. 
in terms of hitting the magazine release, it will hit because the magazine release is a little bit more extended out than, say, a Luger or a 1911, or even a Beretta, to say. But in terms of actually unholstering it, because of how thick it is, you are going to have an issue trying to get it out of the gun, out of the holster. So uh, thicker guns, in no like, in no like the thick guns, the thick boys, in no like that. Moving on to a more Glock style pistol. The Steyr M9A1 is a more Glock style pistol and uh, it's more symmetrical, I guess you could say. It's definitely more symmetrical. So, sticking that in here. Yeah, once again, it's a little thick boy. But, there we go. It does close up and it does, you know, do all that. But, I'm holstering it. Yeah. Still a thick boy, and still, of course, you know, all well, that. Why am I so always doing this? Like, ah! And finally, a revolver. Any revolver, we'll see. So, sticking the revolver into the holster, it went in actually smoothly and very well. Closing up the holster, once again, not that bad, and it does give that nice look on it. Opening it up. No actual issue trying to unsheath a revolver. A revolver does actually play very well with the M12, and does do very nicely, especially for military surplus. But granted, this was sort of the design, I guess, they were going for with the universal holster, was that the main pistols for the military, or at least for the commercial market in, the Amer in America at the time, was more or less revolvers, 1911s, M9s, and other more slimmed-down handguns, I believe. I know the VP9 can go into the M12, because I talked to a friend who has an M12, as his open carry, and he did rock a VP9, uh, you know, the HK VP9 for a while, and then he decided to go for another more standard handgun, like an M9 Beretta. Now, say what you will about the M12 holster, but never say it does. It did not impact the actual market in terms of actually making more better holsters, universal holsters, something that we see common nowadays. We see nowadays in the modern world, in the modern handgun community, or at least in the modern attachment community, is that we now have a lot of universal holsters. The best example I can think of would be the leg holster from UTG, or at least that universal leg holster that can be, that's all Velcro and can be expanded uh, or really be shaped to any sort of handgun that you may have. I've even seen it be expanded to you to house an MP7, uh, but that's just one of those things. But... In terms of this as a whole, if you do go to find one of these, I will warn you now, the price tag is not as cheap as you would find at a flea market. If you do find this at a flea market for, let's say, sub $20, definitely grab one. These are good holsters to have, if not only for the collecting value, but also for practicality's sake. The holster is designed to keep the pistol safe. It's designed to keep the pistol from being, you know, affected by the weather, be damaged, or even anything of that nature. Finally... In terms of the actual finding it online market value, the online market value for the M12 holster is anywhere between $30 and $40. And I'm dead serious on that. When I went to go find one on Sportsman's Guide, they were charging about $40 for this thing. Even if you buy it directly from the manufacturer, you're going to be spending above $40 for an M12. So if you do find this at a surplus market, or at least your surplus store or flea market at a surplus booth, the M12 is a good holster to have. I paid about $15 for this one, and I am very happy with that purchase. Very happy with it, actually. I, I love rocking this thing, and it's very good for airsoft. For woodland play, I should say. Uh, for CQB, I don't think it's good for CQB. Um, like CQC, CQB arenas. But for outdoor woodland, where you can actually be sneaky and you can and you can basically open it up and pull your pistol out and be that sneaky boy, then, yeah, no, the M12 is definitely good for outdoor play and woodland play if you're being a little sneaky guy, and because it's all... Uh, it's not a type of hard plastic or it's, you know, not something that's not going to make a lot of noise, it's definitely good for if you're wanting to be that sneaky person, and because of the OD Green, it's definitely going to blend into the woodland environment. Now, would I recommend this is the question you're asking. Yes and no. Yes, I would definitely recommend this for any airsoft player that is looking for a good, substantial, 
very durable holster in the surplus market for either recreating your loadout from the 90s or even your Stargate SG-1 loadout, because yes, you could see these abundantly in Stargate SG-1, uh, or any other military flick, any military show in the 90s, essentially, uh, or, you know, something of that nature, you know, just you're looking for a good, durable holster, I would definitely recommend the M12. If you're looking for something for open carry, on the other hand, I wouldn't recommend it for open carry. I only say this because I'm not a person who would use an M12 for open carry. I would use something that would definitely give me that ability to quickly pull out my pistol in case of a situation where I might need to drop a son of a bitch. But in terms of airsoft or even competition shooting, Yes, because the boys over at InRange TV would ac actually do rock M12s uh, on their battle belts. Uh, you can go watch a video on that because uh, Carl and Ian actually did talk about the M12 and sort of its uh, shortcomings, how good of a holster it is, things like that. A lot more better detail than I could ever do. But for Airsoft, most definitely. I would fully support the M12 holster for Airsoft use, if not for just collecting use, because I do love the M12 holster. It's well built, it's well designed, it can accept a Luger. Hello? It can accept a Luger. A Luger! And anything else in between, really. Anyway. Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, the con man's airsofter who talks about surplus holsters, or really military surplus in general, so you can consider buying them. And would you kindly consider donating to our page, uh, donating to our PayPal because it's folks like you that keep the lights on in the studio. And would you kindly consider liking, subscribing, disliking, hitting the notification, all that happy jazz. And if you guys have had any experience with the M12 holster and you want to give your thoughts on it, please do so in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on the M12 holster as a whole and sort of how it helped develop the holster technology we have today. And uh, yeah. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Airsoft Al, and I will see all you lovely people in the next video. Till next time, later!